Amen. I want to welcome you to this very special time. We're doing a thing called uh, answers or questions and answers from the pastor. And uh, what I've done is I've invited people to send in some questions during this time that we're living in uh, to try to get some engagement with our people with some of the questions uh, that you may be dealing with. It's been amazing this week to see how many people have responded and uh, ha and just said, hey, I've got a question and there's no way in the world that I could cover all of those. Uh, it's just impossible to do. But I did want to make sure that I recognize, or I, I said to you, that I recognize we're living in an uncertain time. And I recognize that probably you, like myself, you've got more questions than you do answers. Uh, when you think about the world we're living in, all the challenges that we're dealing with, the changes that are occurring, all these things, it, it almost seems like we're just, we're seeing everything happen so fast uh, that uh, we can't get answers quick enough. And I think that's not just true for one person. I think that's true for everybody. So I am so thankful that you're able to tune in with me at this time. And I do want to remind you that in the Sunday nights to come, we've got a lot of guests that will be coming in. Uh, we've got a lot of things we're going to be talking about. And I am really excited about the next few weeks on Sunday afternoon when we are engaging, I hope that you will take advantage of this time to kind of zero in on some of the guests that we're talking about because we got some really incredible topics uh, that we're going to be dealing with in the weeks to come. So let's begin today with a word of prayer and then we'll dig right into some of your questions that you have submitted to me. And uh, let me make a qualifier before I begin today. And that is this, I don't have all the answers. And uh, as Brother Bill said, I don't even know what the questions are most of the time. So <clears throat> we, we need to pray. I do know the Bible says that if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. And we're living in a time where we need the wisdom of the Lord. So let's just bow together and pray. Father, we come to you today. I know, Lord, that we're living in unprecedented times with people that have got all kinds of uncertainties going on. And Father, I am so thankful that in the midst of all the questions, we know the answer. And the answer is found in Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. We thank you, Lord, that in a world that's so, uh, so, so uncertain, that God, we have a certainty in him. And Lord, uh, we thank you that he is our rock and our salvation. And we thank you, Lord, that we have security in him, that he is the anchor of our soul. And uh, we thank you for that. So Lord, today, I pray that you would bless us as we open up our thoughts to questions uh, that go from A to Z. And Lord, that we're able to get wisdom from you now. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. So today, I did want to again remind you that I'm thankful that you tuned in. And I hope and pray that this is a blessing for you. Uh, we're digging in. And the very first question that I thought was so important uh, was one that uh, was asked about the beginning when we went into this COVID idea and that was the, the idea of, of things happening and things going on around us during this time and uh, seeing all the things that were taking place in the introduction. You know, this year has been a crazy year. When we started in 2020 and we uh, started the process of introducing ourselves to this year, uh, Denise and I were in Washington, D.C., uh, at the beginning of the year, we had the wonderful privilege of being able to invi be invited to be honored guests at the presidential prayer breakfast. And also, that was the week of the impeachment trial uh, for our president. And we started off this year with all kinds of uncertainty and then uh, rolled right out of the impeachment trial into COVID-19. And then we're rolling right out of, well, we're still in the middle of COVID-19, still all kind of things going on. And then on top of that, uh, we've got the unrest that's going on around the world. And then what we're faced with is an election, a presidential election uh, that's coming up in uh, November. 
And so one of the questions that was asked was in the beginning of COVID-19, you shared scripture in Jeremiah uh, about uh, the things that was happening. And, and uh, when we begin in, in uh, this uh, time, there was a scripture when we started in COVID-19 that I focused on, and it was in Jeremiah chapter 27 and verse number 8. And I'm going to read that uh, scripture to you. We know that there were a lot of things going on in Jeremiah's day. The, uh, the nation of Israel was about to be taken into Babylonian captivity. Uh, there's false prophecies going on. Uh, there is all kinds of uh, things that God is speaking to Jeremiah. And in verse number 8, it says uh, in, in this scripture that, or chapter 27, I'm sorry, chapter 27 in verse uh, number 8. Uh, this is happening, it says, And it shall come to pass that the nation and the kingdom, which will not serve the name of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and then will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, saith the Lord, with the sword and with famine and with pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. Now, this is a prophecy that's beginning uh, to be given to Jeremiah that's talking about the bondage and the yokes. Uh, he exhorts the nation of Israel to yield to him in chapter 27 and verse number 8, recognizing that there's going to be false prophets that's going to be giving false messages and that uh, the nation of Israel is going to be put under uh, the bondage of the Babylonians. And there's going to be all kinds of bondages and yokes that are going to be put upon them. And watch this, because they will not serve uh, the, the, they won't yield to the king, uh, the Lord, the Lord God. And when we don't do that, they're go God says he's going to punish that nation. He's going to punish them. And the Bible says that he'll punish them with the sword. That's, that's war that's going to be threatened. Uh, we're living in a time today, I believe, that we are on the very verge of, uh, of, of war. Uh, there's war not only in the nations of the world, but there's war in individual people that is happening. We see this, this thread of this, and uh, the war is always bloodshed. Uh, we're seeing that. And then pestilence, uh, he talks about that. Uh, that he's going to send pestilence on the land. And there's so much in the New Testament that speaks about that. And we'll get to that in just a moment. But I believe that when we look at COVID-19, we look at all this happening. Can I say this to you? I believe that God is trying to get our attention. Uh, I believe he wants our attention and we need to turn to him. America, listen to me. We need to turn back to God. We need to trust God. I believe that God is giving us a last warning in this land and we need to be sensitive to the voice of God. And what I'm afraid is happening is so many, we're getting so many voices and so much noise that we're not hearing the message of God. And I believe that God <clears throat> is sending uh, the message that we need to get ready. Christ is coming. And I believe that so many people are understanding that. So I, I'm going to get back to that. I, I know that I've got a lot to say about that. And I, I know that a lot of people have sent in questions about the last days and what I believe about all that. And I am definitely going to address those thoughts. Folks, I believe that we need to send out an alarm. I truly believe that we need to get ready. Christ is coming. I have to say that. I believe that with all of my heart. I believe that the church is, I believe God's getting the church ready. I believe that Christ is coming again. I believe the rapture is going to happen. I believe the tribulation period is right around the corner. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you, we need to get serious with this message more than ever before. Oh, men of God, people of God, women of God, children of God, get ready. I believe that we're on the edge of the coming of the Lord. So, in that thought, uh, I want to address one more question, and that is, is it wrong to pray for the rapture? Uh, it's amazing that that question has come up to me uh, a lot. Uh, in, well, a few times in the last few weeks, people have said to me, Brother Jackie, do you believe the rapture's uh, here? Do you believe it's going to happen? And uh, 
Is it wrong to wish that it would happen? Is it wrong to say, Lord, I wish you'd come back and get us? Uh, and I've had to search deeply w within me to answer that question uh, because I believe that if you're a child of God, there has to be an internal urgency uh, that's bubbling up in your spirit that's saying, Lord, please come. Uh, and, and so I want to address the question, is it wrong to pray for the rapture? Now, let's think about that in lieu of, let's look at it biblically. Let's look at it biblically. And uh, I want to turn all the way over to the end of the book of Revelation, the very last book uh, in your Bible, the book of Revelation. We know John is on the Isle of Patmos, and God has given him a panoramic view of the future of the world. <clears throat> and John is on the Isle of Patmos. And there, wrapping it up in chapter 22, uh, we, we see John, and this is what he says in verse number 20 and verse number 21. He which testifies these things say, Surely I come quickly. That is the Lord Jesus Christ that makes that declaration. Surely I come quickly. I'm coming quickly. Old friend, Jesus is telling us he's going to come quickly. And notice what John says. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So it looks as if to me that uh, John on the Isle of Patmos, as Jesus made the proclamation, I'm coming quickly, it looks as if John is saying in his prayer and in his affirmation to that statement, even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. If the Bible ends with an amen prayer, uh, amen in verse number 20, amen in verse number 21, it looks to me as if John is saying, I'm praying that you would come quickly, Lord Jesus, amen. So obviously we find in the scripture uh, that it's okay to pray for Christ to come. But I think that I had to search deeply uh, to re let this resonate in my spirit, <clears throat> is it selfish to pray for Christ to come now? And I had to look deeply within me because honestly, I'm in total agreement with, with the words of Jesus and the prayer of John on the Isle of Patmos. Jesus, if you're coming quickly, come on, let's get out of here. Uh, when I look around at the condition of the world, I am in agreement with that. But also, I have to understand that there's another biblical truth that causes me deep conviction. And I have to deal with that as well. And it's found in the book of 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9. And I want you to look at that verse. And it says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse number 9, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And he goes on there. But notice right there, he says that God is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, we're not willing that any should perish. So <clears throat> I was convicted. I was convicted. Surely it's okay to pray for Christ to come. I think that's evident scripturally. I think that it is in line with the Word of God, but I also think that we need to understand why He has not come. And the Bible tells us why He's not come. He's long suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Did you know, according to that scripture, Christ the Lord God is giving one more minute one more hour, one more day, whatever that may mean, so that one more lost sinner could come to know Christ as their Savior. He is not willing that any should perish. God is not slack concerning his promise. He's going to come, but he's long-suffering so that people won't perish, so that people will come to repentance. So here's the thought. Is it wrong to pray for the rapture? Absolutely not. But I think in our praying that we have to be convicted that our prayer also needs to include this thought for you, and that is this. Have you been praying for lost people? 
Have you been praying that the gospel message will get out? Uh, Church, have we forgotten that we have a responsibility that our mandate while we're on this earth is to share the gospel to reach others for Christ? And I think that if we're not careful, we can get approval uh, to pray for the rapture. Yes, we should. But at the same time, neglect our assignment while we're on this earth. So I think it's very important that you recognize and realize that I'm not saying that you need to be a doomsday prepper, but I do think that you need to have wisdom, wisdom that uh, you make preparation for uh, famines or pestilence. And I don't think it's a bad idea uh, to have some extra things around your house in your cupboard. You know, when I think about back in my day, my mom and daddy always had something that was canned and put up and 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 they always used to, I remember my mother used to say, well, now this is for winter. And I think that we need to get ourselves prepared and we need to get ready for the winter of life. And uh, we, 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 we can do that. I think that we just need to be, you know, the Bible talks about in the book of Proverbs, go to the ant thou sluggard and consider her ways. And so the Bible uses the ant as a reference of us making preparation. And I think that we can make preparation for uh, some hard times, but I also think that we have to put our trust in the Lord. The Bible says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So use wisdom in planning and preparing for that. I do believe we're living in the last days, but I don't think that we have a idea of what that timetable may be. But for you, as far as getting some things uh, that you could plan and prepare, I don't think that's a bad thing, but don't become overboard with it. And I think that's where you've got to be. Now, <clears throat> let's move on to another question that I think is a good question. And and that is this. I'm going I'm to try to address two more. And that is dealing with the last days again. It says this, In this day we live in, it's hard to watch the news and not be afraid. How do we not be afraid? How do we as parents help our children to cope with all that's going on and prepare them to go back to school, uh, in elementary school, high school, or off to college? Boy, I tell you, that's a great question in the world we live in today. And I think that we have to realize uh, that um, the Bible tells us what to do with our kids. And uh, I want to give that to you. First of all, I want to encourage you as parents that we're living in these last days and in this time with all kind of things. And you're right. Uh, it's hard to live in this world that you live in and not have some edgy uh, edge about it. And, and I know your kids are seeing the same thing. So here's what I'm going to say to you. First of all, listen carefully. Speak words of life to your kids and around your kids. Little rabbits have big ears. And you have to be responsible for what you expose your children to and how you talk around them. I think one of the things that I see that disturbs me so much is how much adults talk around kids about subjects that kids don't need to hear. When I was growing up, my mom and daddy would say to me, son, go out in the yard, play. Grown folks need to talk. And I think that you've got to have some wisdom in making sure that you know when to say and what to say around your kids. Sometimes you need to have some grown folk conversation that your kids don't need to hear about situations. But I believe that you need to speak life into your children. The Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. So be careful what you say and be careful what you expose your kids to and what they listen to. And then the Bible says, train up a child the way you should go when he's old. He won't depart from it. That, that has not changed. Doesn't matter what day you live in. As a parent, as a grandparent, you have the responsibility to train up your child. The Bible speaks directly in the fact that you are to speak the words of God into the child. 
that when they rise up, when they lay down, when they go about their way, speak biblical truth into them. Speak words of faith into them. Uh, don't speak words of fear into them, but speak words of faith into them. Speak words of scripture into them that will give them a reference point as to where to go to when they look at the world that's so in uncertainty. Speak the words of life into them. Speak words of scripture into them. T speak the address to the words of the scripture. Uh, tell them where to find it in the Bible. Take your Bible out and show them the words that they need to comfort them during this time. You need to make sure that you're doing that. And the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. So you need to remind yourself and your children that there is a supernatural power at work in you. Uh, there is a love. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse number 18, perfect love cast out fear. Surround your children with love. Let them know that they are loved. Let them know that they are protected. Give them a safe place in, their, in your home. Don't let them listen to all the junk and all the garbage. Don't let their minds be preoccupied with things that they are, their minds does not need to be preoccupied with. So I think in these unprecedented times, in these unsettled times, make sure that you do those things for your kids. Speak words of life. Speak words of scripture to them. Show them love. Give them security. Watch what, protect what they watch. Protect what they hear. Uh, make sure that you're governing, that's your responsibility as a parent uh, to make sure you do that. I could spend a lot of time on that, uh, but we really have to kind of accelerate here. Now, <clears throat> here's another question. The, and I thought this was a great question to wrap it up with. It says, I have to admit, I've enjoyed this quarantine time forcing me to be still, staying at home, not having to be at 10 different places in one given day. I think all of us can say yes and amen to that. I've enjoyed all the sermons on the website, some twice, thank God for that. But even with the love of staying home, I had to go out here and there for supplies when doing so. I have great fear of what I might bring home to my 88-year-old mother. What fear, if any, did you have during this crazy time we're living in? I think all of us have concerns and fears in our life that we have to navigate through. And I think that we all have to do as much as we can do uh, in making sure that we take the precautions, we wash our hands, we, we make sure that we're sensitive uh, to our environments. I think that we have to do our part in taking the precautions that are necessary uh, to do all that we can do. Now, we can't be dictated by fear and we can't become, you know, those people that are so, that panic about everything. But I think we have to use common sense. We have to use wisdom and we have to do everything we can do in precautionary measures. Uh, and I think that's all you can do. Now, I think that also lends itself into discussion about our churches and what we're doing here. You know, it's been a real journey for us uh, during this time. Leaders have struggled. Uh, we were having to go and do a lot of things, and we, we're not doing church like we've always done church. And I appreciate the people that are coming back that are uh, being flexible and understanding, and we're, tr you know, we're doing all the precautionary things that we need to do. Uh, we're giving people options. And I think in your own homes that you have to do what you feel that you need to do in order to be safe and that you, you, you feel comfortable with that. That's why even in our churches, we've said, hey, look, if you feel a little uncomfortable, you can still watch online. If you do come, we want to help you enter the building safely. We want to help you have an enjoyable experience while you're here while at the same time making sure that we keep everything safe. So I think that your question is a legitimate question of dealing with all that. Do what you can do to make sure you're doing the precautionary measures to keep you safe. But don't, listen, we're not living in a bubble. Uh, you know, I think that we have to have wisdom and we have to operate in that wisdom. But at the same time, uh, we're not in a bubble. 
and and we're just going to have to do everything we can do and i think prayer is essential to help us navigate through these tough waters so tonight i'm so glad that you tuned in and i'm so glad that you are able uh, to ask me some questions i wish i had time to deal with them all of them i simply don't but i do want to leave you with these words and that is this one of my favorite scriptures in the whole world uh, is found in the book of Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 5 and 6. So I want to encourage you, if you don't have this underlined or, or starred or highlighted in your Bible, then you need to do that. Chapter 3 of the book of Proverbs, verse number 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. You know, as we think about the, our future, there's a lot of uncertainty. There's a lot of questions. But I believe that we can do exactly what Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 says. And I know that if we trust in Him, that God will direct our path. That's where I'm going to anchor my future. And I hope that you will join me and anchor your future right there as well. May God bless you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time that we can be together. Thank you, Lord, that you are God. And Lord, we can trust in you. I pray that you bless these people. I pray that you bless our churches. And God, that you will keep your hand upon us. And yes, we even with John on the Isle of Patmos pray, even so come, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in.